Hey, Kevin here, Skylabs, bringing you another video. Definitely gonna be a fun one. This is another tips from the bench. I thought it'd be fun to grab the cheapest soldering iron I could buy on Amazon and see if we could tin some wires. Maybe get away from all those expensive banana plugs and spade connectors and stuff like that. This thing was $7.99. Of course, there'll be a link down in the description if you wanna pick one up yourself. We'll also talk about the soldering irons that we use here at the shop. I haven't even pulled this thing out of the box yet. So this could be a total flop. And at $7.99, I probably wouldn't be that shocked. Let's see if this thing works. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time, aren't I? And wasting yours. I don't wanna do that. So here we go. And you might think I don't need to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Soldering irons get hot. I know. Soldering irons get hot. They get really hot. You don't want to touch the hot end. Hot end, bad. Handle, good. It's like, it's like my shirt says. And you can get one of these on Amazon. That's where I got mine just for this video. I thought it was hilarious. Um, if it smells like chicken, you're holding it wrong. There's even a photo, a stock photo of, um, of someone holding a soldering iron, almost like a pencil. Uh, you know, people just don't know. So if you don't know your way around a soldering iron, make sure you're holding the handle. Don't walk away from it if it's plugged in, if it doesn't have an on off or it doesn't have a secure base. A really good soldering station comes with a nice base. I don't think the base in this thing is gonna give you peace of mind walking away from it. It wouldn't me. So um, just be careful. Soldering irons are hot. I know it seems silly, but I have to say it. So let's open up this kit. Let's see what we got. I'm sure this is really fine craftsmanship. Comes with a little bit of solder. A little sponge. And some solder tips. Oh, and here's our base. Just like I thought. Not the most sturdy thing in the world. And we've got our soldering iron here. And really the whole goal with this uh, is to try and avoid having to have every kind of connector out there, depending on what speakers and receiver you're hooking up. Tinning wires is a really good way of getting a really good solid connection. I think the goal with any connection is to get as much contact surface as you can. And if you tin your wires, especially braided, obviously I don't think it would matter if it was a solid core wire, but most of the time people are dealing with braided wires. So getting solder on all those braids and kind of making one piece of wire out of the end, the contact should be better. I would definitely agree with this. And um, so that's why we're gonna, we're gonna tin the end of these wires. I think a lot of people would even agree that this is better than any of these connectors you can buy. It's gonna give you more contact connection and that's always good, especially with your precious electronics. I've got a couple different styles of terminals. You'd see the screw down style like this um, on the back of a lot of tube amplifiers. This is really common. And then these are the speaker jacks for a Marantz. You know, like 22 series, 2270, 2245. And that's a pretty small opening in there. So getting a decent sized gauged wire to fit in there securely, tinning it is definitely the best way to go. A JBL, this would be off of like an L100. And you can see how small that opening is. I mean, these are tiny. There's no way you could get a 10 gauge speaker cable in that. It's just not possible. And keep in mind, both Macintosh and Marantz in their manuals said, buy lamp cord. They didn't even know what speaker cable was back then. So if you get yourself some decent 16 gauge copper wire, you're doing just fine. That's what I use. I've got 16 gauge copper wire here. If you try tinning your wires or you try soldering your wires and they won't, except the solder, that means you might have copper clad wire. You know why they might advertise it as copper. It's essentially like plated and the solder just, it won't, it won't stick to it. So 
make sure you're buying a good enough cable. I got to get the soldering iron plugged in if this thing actually works. Hopefully it does. $7.99, if you use it a couple times, um, it's cheaper than buying speaker connectors. So let's see. Well, it does have a little red light on there. That's nice. So it does indicate whether it's on or not. You know, and if, if you are considering getting into the hobby a little bit more, I, I've had every soldering iron out there, you, you name it. These Heikos are incredible. This is a FX888D. That's what I'm using. That's what Rob's using. That's what my dad's using. I think it's kind of the go-to soldering iron for people that use soldering irons every day. They're temperature controlled. They don't lose their heat. They, they heat up quickly, which is nice. You don't feel like you have to have it running all day. Can't recommend those Heikos enough. We'll have a link for that down in the description as well. Also, the solder I like to use, and I've tried quite a few, but this one is my favorite. This is a, it's made by Kester. And we'll have a link for this down in the description too. I love this solder. It's, it's a little on the expensive side, but when you do this every day, you just want stuff that does what it needs to do. Yeah, we'll see. We'll try the solder that the kit came with just to see if that works. But um, yeah, this thing doesn't even feel warm. It's warm. All right. Well, let's give this a shot. I'm going to get some solder on this tip. We're going to tin the tip a little bit, as they would say, and that's good too. Oh, it's melting it pretty good. Kind of wanting to ball up on there. I'm not even going to bother. Oh, I just splatted it. I'm not even going to bother using this. This is the, um, this is the sponge they give you. Yeah, this stand sucks. I would not, don't walk away from this thing when it's on. Let's see if this thing even expands. I mean, I get it, it's $7.99, but we can still laugh at it, right? Because, yeah, wow. All right. All right, well, let's let's try tinning some wire with this, with this kit. Really, you want to heat the wire first. You don't want to just try sticking both of them together at the same time. You want to let that heat get into that wire so it flows the solder better. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> yeah, this isn't working. I don't know if it just doesn't get hot enough or if it's bad solder. Let's try the $7.99 one with some of my my good Kester solder. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, that worked. That worked pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect. Got a little bit of, I can't really see. I'm not that close to it because I'm trying to pay attention to the cameras too. But that's actually pretty decent. I'd be happy with that. So, all right, first thing, the solder in the kit is garbage. This is terrible. I would buy solder separately from what they're giving you in the kit. The iron actually melted it pretty well. Um, thing too you always want to clean your tip of your soldering iron that's what the sponge is for you know you put some water on it and then you kind of get the old solder off and get a, a clean tip there so definitely always clean your tip of your soldering iron all right so we've got our first bit of wire soldered and now let's see what it's like putting that into these marants 
you know, and it fits right in there and it's nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. You're not going to have any loose braids popping out of there. That's a good connection. And that's probably better than getting a mini pin connector and doing that. You know, a lot of these, you know, the problem with these, the problem with these mini bananas is, you know, this outer shell is conductive. And because they put these so close together, you know, there's a good chance of them touching. And so you have to put electrical tape on them to keep them from touching each other. And so already you're better off doing this. There's less chance of an issue of having these wires short themselves out. You know, and if you prefer these, you know, and you've got a method, I, I, these are great. There, there's, there's nothing wrong with any of these. I, I just think, you know, this is an alternative that I don't think a lot of people think about. And the whole point of this video was to, to see if we could achieve this for under $8. And it appears like you can. You know, the solder inside sucks. You're gonna have to buy a different solder, but the, um, the iron seems to work just fine. And so let's hook up, let's hook up these. And I'll show you how to tin the wire for a screw down terminal, at least the way I do it. Instead of tinning the wire straight, like we did on this one, I am going to put a hook in it. So you wanna strip back a little bit more maybe than you did for the straight one. You know, just curve it around. You know, something like that. And we'll do the same thing. And there we go. We got our tinned hook wire. And what you do now is just wrap that around that screw down terminal. And then tighten it down. I mean, that is locked in. That is not going anywhere. That is a good secure connection, no question. And again, this might be a better option than trying to do something like this, because a lot of times these are really close together. So two different ways of doing it. These are definitely more expensive, and I think this is probably getting you a better connection anyway, because you have two points of contact here, you just have one here. So that's just my opinion, like everything else. It's just my opinion, but... I don't know how long this thing's going to last. I don't know if this, I mean, this thing could die on me tomorrow, obviously, but uh, for eight bucks, I think you could probably get away with this thing. Anyway, maybe you got another option now. Don't grab it like a pen. It's hot. Don't walk away from it. Don't let your kids come pick it up, but it's not hard. Thank you for watching another video. Got another video coming out on Sunday. It's gonna be the follow-up to our Buyer Beware series. This time we're looking at Pioneer, stuff like this. And there's some good videos coming down the pipe. So if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. According to our YouTube analytics, most of you haven't subscribed and I get it. A lot of people don't wanna create a YouTube account. Um, I don't wanna create any more accounts either. I hate them, you know? I hate getting all the emails and all the, all the junk but um, YouTube uh, isn't bad and it, it really helped us out. So grab yourself a, um, if it smells like chicken, you're holding it wrong t-shirt. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this information might save you from having to buy another set of speaker jacks because you bought another receiver. So, have a great one. Thanks.